Good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, West Area Planning. Uh, my name is Mark Cargill. I'm chairing the meeting this evening. Uh, lots of uh, representation this evening, so uh, not, not many items. Right, uh, post housekeeping, so no alarm, fire alarms are scheduled this evening. Uh, so if you do hear an alarm, please may you make your way out and congregate in the car park opposite by the pub. Please note this is a planning meeting uh, with public participation, not a public meeting. Only persons registered to speak will be allowed to do so. Uh, this meeting is being webcast. If you don't wish to be shown on the big wide world web, then please let an officer know at the appropriate time. For speakers this evening, uh, tips on the microphone, don't get too close to it, otherwise it becomes distorted. So uh, stand away from it a little bit and then talk clearly. The sequence of events for each uh, application is as follows. I introduce the item, supported by the case officer who offers a description. Town and parish councillors will be allowed to speak for up to three minutes. Uh, members of the public objecting will be allowed to speak for up to three minutes. The applicant will then be allowed to speak for a commensurate time, either three or six minutes. I will give a approximate 30 second warning for time up. Ward members will then be allowed to speak for five minutes. At all stages, the members of the committee are allowed to ask questions following a presentation. We then uh, ask the quest case officer on technical questions and then move to debate and the vote. All of this is detailed in the agenda. Uh, may I ask you to turn your phones off or to silent, please, for the duration of the, the meeting? Right, uh, there is a, a late, uh, an update sheet for late breaking items uh, on your chairs. Right. Um, I would like now the officers to introduce themselves, starting from my right. Anne Bynes from Committee Services. Ross Chambers, Legal Services. Karen Tate, Team Leader. If I can clarify, my role is to act as an impartial advisor to the committee and, with the case officer, help answer any questions which arise. I'm bound by the Code of Professional Conduct of the Royal Town Planning Institute and, during the course of the meeting, I may seek to understand and test the views being expressed by committee members. This is done to ensure that the final decision made by the committee is best placed to withstand any subsequent challenge. Committee members can balance the planning issues as they consider appropriate, and they are not bound by the case officer's recommendation in the agenda or by verbal advice provided this evening. Thank you. I'm Victoria Chadaway, Senior Planning Officer. Eleanor Abbas, Planning Officer. Thank you. I'll now start the meeting. Um, apologies for absence. Chairman, we've got apologies from Councillor Giles, for whom Councillor Fielding is substituting, and Councillor Courage. Thank you. Dix Sorry, did you want to say disclosure of interest? Yes? Thank you, Chair. Did I miss expressions of interest? No, I've just done it. Okay. <laughs> I, I have one. I, I'm the ward member for um, application number 17-00724. Out. I have formed an opinion on this, so I won't take part in any debate if there is any, as I note that there's nobody here this evening. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor. Um, Councillor Barnes. And I've got the last application answer of me speaking for it. Thank you very much. Uh, minutes of meeting, are members happy with, for me to sign the minutes after, this, after the meeting? Thank you, I shall do so then. Right, let's move straight into the agenda then for this evening. Uh, the first item is application 17-00724 out to School Hill Cottages, Stratford and Avon, Wootton Wern, and Victoria is presenting. This site is at Two School Hill Cottages uh, on Stratford Road, Wootton Warren, as indicated by the black dot. The site falls within the defined built-up area of Wootton Warren and is within the West Midlands Green Belt. The application site includes the existing property and the garden area of Two School Hill Cottages. The application has been submitted in outline and seeks to subdivide the existing site into two L-shaped plots, obtaining a reduced garden area for the existing property and creating a new plot for the proposed dwelling as indicated in the hatching on this plan. For your information, an outline consent has recently been approved to the plot to the south of the site. This was approved uh, in September of last year.
This is a street view of the site showing the existing property which fronts onto Stratford Road. This is an indicative plan of the proposed dwelling. And this is an indicative layout plan. Both are indicative and do not form part of the proposal uh, as it has been submitted entirely in outline with all matters reserved. This is a view across the rear garden of the site towards the Stratford Road and shows the majority of the proposed area that would be for the proposed new dwelling. This is a photo um, towards the rear boundary of the site. Uh, on the left hand side is a, a workshop garage and to the right is um, a, a, just a shed, both of which would be removed in order to allow the development of the proposed dwelling. And finally, this is an aerial um, shot of the site, or Google image. Uh, the red line is my own uh, indicative layout of how the site would be subdivided. Um, the purpose of the, the, the slide is to show how properties are laid out on the Stratford Road uh, within their existing plots. <clears throat> and the character of those plots in this area. The officer recommendation is for refusal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, we have no speakers this evening, and I believe also that Councillor Lawton has indicated he's not speaking on this particular point. Uh, can I move to technical questions for the officer, please? Councillor Barnes. It said Stratford Road. What's the other end? I mean, the Stratford Road from Italy is the Birmingham Road one way and Stratford the other. Yeah, oh, it's the 3400. Yeah. Oh, is it? Uh, are there any other? Yes, Councillor Fielding. Uh, do we take it that it's rather more backland development than front road frontage development? I think just due to the constraints of the site, the only possible siting would be towards the, the rear of the existing house. So, yes, it would be to the back of it. No other questions? I open up for debate. Councillor Richards. Thank you, Chair. Um, my understanding is there's no such thing as backland development policies anymore. Um, I think the officer has outlined the reasons for refusal perfectly well, and I'm entirely happy with them. I recommend, I would like to push that we go with the officer recommendation. Thank you. I have a proposal. Do I, do I have mean. a seconder for this? Councillor Barnes? Uh, yes, I'm quite happy to second. I'm disappointed that the parish council who supported it, for the reason it's here, haven't come to speak. Um, I appreciate what the board member is doing, but uh, we've got no option to refuse. Thank you. Yes, I, I do support that view that if there are no, uh, if they bring it to council uh, committee, then they should come along. I agree with that as well. Okay, I have a proposer and I have a seconder. The vote, sorry, yeah. oh, so I already have a seconder. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, members, the vote before you is 17-00724-out, uh, slash and it's to refuse. All those in favour? Unanimous, Chairman. Thank you. This can be therefore resolved to refuse planning permission for 17-00724-out. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is 17-03691-4. Uh, Six Eaton Road, and Victoria is presenting again. Thank you. Um, the application site is at 6 Eaton Road, Stratford-on-Avon, as indicated by the black dot. Uh, the red line outline shows the existing property and associated curtilage in the context of the surrounding area. Um, this slide shows the existing front elevation of the application site and uh, within the context of the surrounding area. This slide shows the existing house in elevation format and the proposed extension. Um, the proposal is for a first floor side extension above the existing garage and a two storey and single storey rear extension, which I'll show you on a, a, a later slide. 
The design of the proposed extension has taken into account a similar extension that exists within the existing street, as shown on this slide. This is a view of the existing rear of the property uh, in the context of its two neighbouring dwellings. This is a proposal towards the rear of the site, showing the rear two-storey extension and single-storey extension. Um, and this is the footprint of the proposed uh, extension. Um, just to be noted that there has been an amendment during the course of the application to bring back the single-storey rear element in line with number eight Eaton Road. There is one update on this application, uh, and that is that since the application, uh, since the report was written, um, the, uh, the town council have confirmed that they have no representations to make. Uh, and the recommendation is for approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And the reason for bringing it to committee? Is that it's um, a, a, an employee. Thank you. Uh, we have no speakers on this item. Uh, are there any technical questions you would like to ask the officer? Uh, do we wish to go to debate? Councillor Richards. I propose we uh, go with the officer's recommendation. Thank you. I have a proposer and a seconder. Members of the vote before I use to grant plan permission for 17 slash 03691 slash 4. All those in favour? Thank you. Unanimous chair. Thank you. This committee therefore resolves to grant plan permission for 17 slash 03691 slash 4. Thank you. We'll just change over presenting officers. Right. The next item then is 17 slash 03244 slash 4. Eleanor is presenting. Thank you, Chairman. This application is a full planning application for the erection of two detached dwellings and associated garaging. The application site lies to the northeast of the village of Clifford Chambers, identified by the black dot on the plan. The site is located at the northern end of the close, adjacent to the dwelling known as Willowmere. A public footpath runs along the access road following along the eastern edge of the site and then turning westwards along the river to the north of the site. This is shown dotted green on the plan. The River Stour is located to the north of the site with the northern corner lying in flood zones two and three. In addition, the boundary of the conservation area is outlined in pink on the plan set some 100 metres away from the proposed dwellings. Here we have an aerial view of the application site, which is roughly outlined in red. Members will note the existing dwelling known as Willowmere adjacent to the application site and also the paddock area within the eastern part of the application site. Here we have the proposed site plan, which shows two detached dwellings, plot one and plot two, and their associated detached garages and access drive. This plan shows the elevations of plot one, which would be a four bedroom detached house with a detached double garage and garden store. These are the elevations of the dwelling proposed at plot two. Again, this is a four bedroom detached house with a separate garage and garden store. We now have some photos of the site. Here we're standing on the main road that runs through Clifford Chambers, looking northwards up the close. We're now standing at the end of the close, with Willowmere to the left of the photo, and the application site in front of us, accessed through the gates. gates. Owlet End, a neighbouring dwelling, is just to the right of the photo. Looking directly into the application site, onto paddock land, this would be the access drive and plot one would be on this parcel, land, parcel of land directly in front of us. Plot two would be located to the left behind the trees and existing dwelling. 
The fence to the right of the photo delineates the public footpath that follows the perimeter of the application site. We now stood on the public footpath to the north of the site, looking across the paddock land with Willowmere in the background. Plot one would be located in front of us. This is standing within the garden of Willowmere, looking at the existing tennis court and outbuildings. These will be um, demolished and plot two will be sited in this area. Again, we're still standing in the garden of Willowmere and the outbuilding to the left will be demolished. The garaging for plot two would be located directly in front of us and plot one would be in, in the background. I now have a video to show. So we're standing on the public footpath and panning round from Willowmere across the paddock land where plot one would be located and its associated garden towards the rear of the site with the river um, adjacent to the application site. There are no updates to the application. Chairman, the recommendation is to refuse the application for the reasons set out on page 47 of the agenda. Thank you, Oliver. Our first speaker this evening is Councillor Les Mosley. Councillor, you have three minutes and you're in time. Thank you, Chairman. Councillors, good. Officers, good evening. Um, I've been Chairman of the Parish Council just for uh, one year, um, and this application came in during uh, that first year of my tenure. However, I've lived in the village for 35 years, um, and therefore from that I have some background knowledge of this site. Uh, I also... Um, I'm chairman of, currently chairman, and will be until it's completed, uh, the Neighbourhood Plan Development Group. Uh, that has some bearing on this application and the reason that the Parish Council is supporting it. First of all, um, some of the history of this site. The landscape sensitivity to housing development uh, work that was done in 2012 actually stated that this site, and I will quote it, um, small scale housing development here would have no impact on the wider landscape and very little on the set settlement. And therefore, from that, I would take it that the, the officer at the time felt that this was a, an appropriate area for a small scale development. In addition to that, the Parish Council carried out as part of its um, neighbourhood plan development work the, a questionnaire this year. The questionnaire came out favourably. Uh, in terms of development on gardens and therefore part of the reason that we supported it was the results of that questionnaire. In addition to that, in July of this year, the Parish Council was consulted that was on the 7th of July. We should have been consulted rather three weeks before that but for some reason we weren't. It was fortuitous I was having a meeting with one of your officers, Matthew Neal. And he pointed out that the built up area boundary uh, was different than the one that we were proposing uh, as part of the neighbourhood development plan. Uh, we looked at that uh, consultation document and we responded in the time frame that was required, and that was by the 27th of July uh, of, this, of last year. The plan that we sent and the plan that was consulted in the public in two public meetings was the one that I sent to the planning officer when uh, this application was first rejected. That plan will also be part of the neighbourhood plan document when it's submitted to SDC very shortly uh, for assessment. That plan includes the whole of this garden. And the reason for that is that I know... 30 seconds, please, Councillor. Say again? 30 seconds. Okay. Well, the reason for that is that we know that this garden... Um, has been in existence for the best part of 25 to 30 years as, as a garden and we didn't consider it at all to be a paddock um, and for that reason the parish council are strongly supporting this A, it's been agreed as it were in the questionnaire in terms of a garden development and B, we believe it's within the built up area boundary and it certainly will be when we submit our documentation under the neighbourhood plan Thank you councillor Any questions members? How's it feeling? 
how soon before you get the neighborhood plan coming forward? Uh, the schedule at the moment is dictating that by May it will be submitted to the Stratford District Council, which will be the first line of uh, assessment. Any other questions of the councillor? No? Okay, thank you very much, councillor. Our next speaker is Donna Savage. Oh, you're struggling, Donna. Oh no, okay, well. <laughs> Three minutes in your own time. Um, thank you, Chairman. I don't want to say too much because I think um, most of the points have been covered by the, the parish councillor. Um, but what I would like you all to do is actually have a look at the plan that's on the screen. Um, we had this done. Um, as we went through the application because I think it illustrates that putting two plots up at the top of the close in no way is out of character with the rest of the, the close or actually the character of um, Clifford Chambers. I actually think it rounds off the close. <clears throat> and um, in the officer's report, uh, she supports the development of plot two, which is to the left-hand side as you look at it, but obviously not plot one, which um, she believes is mostly within what is a paddock. Now, my client took the decision years ago to fence that off um, because they do have um, a very big plot. Um, but you've heard from the parish council that you know, they've quoted your own document back at you saying that this is a well-screened piece of um, land which is within that um, wider settlement of the village. And I think when you look at that plan, you know, as a planner, I look at that and think, actually, I would know which were the two new houses that were being proposed because it fits in with the village so well. Um, there isn't a village, develop, uh, a village boundary um, in terms of development. That's being worked through at the moment. And I think it's a balancing exercise with all things planning that we have to look at something and say, is it out of keeping with the character of the village? And does it cause demonstrable harm that would warrant a refusal of an application? Thank you. Thank you, Don. Um, but at the moment, we are, the officer is saying that it's not within the built up area boundary that is accepted, has been accepted by this council. So are you saying that uh, it, it, it is or it's not in there or, or what is your view on that particular element of it, please? <clears throat> there isn't a formal built up area boundary. We have two plans. One is the neighbourhood plan. Uh, which has done a built-up area boundary of its own and has submitted it to the council for consideration. That um, was done through public consultation and two rounds of voting happened on that plan. So there is buy-in from the villagers that the entire red line site that you see there is within the built-up area boundary of the village. The other built-up area boundary, which differs from the proposed neighbourhood plan one, is the one that's formally out to consultation at the moment um, through the, um, I can't think of what the document's called, I'm sure the officers will be able to, to help, but um, it's basically identifying the, the built-up area boundaries around uh, the, the, the LSVs. So in planning terms, there isn't an actual built-up area boundary, um, and it is therefore open to interpretation. Okay, thank you. Councillor Fielding. I'm a bit puzzled by the comments made. The planning officer refers to it as part paddock, part garden land, but from what I understand from the parish councillor, they've been treating it as garden land for the last 30 years. Am I right or am I, did I miss here? No, you heard correctly. Um, this site originally was owned by um, one of the lawnmower companies and their... Um, they had quite a large area which they used to mow and test their lawnmowers on. Um, it's a very big piece to look after and there's fences all across the land where my client has erected them over the years just to kind of break up that bit of land and to, to do different things in different areas. Um, but, you know, it's, it's always been part of that wider garden and that's going back to the 1980s. Thank you. Any other questions? 
No? Thank you very much, sir. Right. Any other technical questions you would like to ask? I think the first one I'd like to ask. Sorry? Oh, apologise. Councillor Barnes. <laughs> Five minutes. Sorry, Councillor Barnes, I nearly shut, shut you off there. Apologies. You usually forget me, but I'll just make to say that the dog is waiting for this. I'll put his thing up. Um, this application came in in the respect some time ago. The lady came to me, she said, I want to build a house for my daughter. Um, I said, it's on the flood plane. Oh, no, it's not. I've been here 32 years and it doesn't flood. So I said, well, you know, there's a blue line on the flood plane. It's all on the computer. Looked at it, moved it back. Um, so in that respect, as far as I'm concerned, they're both in the, in the correct place. They're not on the flood plane. If you put on the picture of the village, could you, with the conservation area, that would be appreciated if you could. Um, the, city, the village, uh, yeah, that will do. Yes. yes, OK, that's all right. Uh, the point really is that uh, um, the conservation area does take a lot of the village up. Every time we've had an application for people who have had in the garden, the conservation architect supposed it. So we are a bit limited to get our 33 houses, which is the quota for the village, with the, uh, all the facilities that it has. Uh, and thereupon, that's one of the reasons that, as far as I'm concerned, this isn't in the conservation area. All the way along the conservation area on that side is in the floodplain, and you can or can't see the, the, the mill and, and down there, and the river Stour. We have unfortunately or fortunately had to build the other side of the road now which you hopefully will be in the next uh, in the, the latest uh, plan uh, because in theory we can't build actually in the village could build on the allotments so as far as I'm concerned this is an ideal site it isn't on the floodplain which it was um, I understand a bit of it is a, out of the old village boundary but in, as you hear from the parish council, it will be in the village boundary. We are building three houses by the pub out of the village. We've got eight houses across the road which are being built out of the village because we don't really want to, I don't know what the right word is, bugger the village up, if you see what I mean, by having houses in it. So as far as I'm concerned, the red a problem. It, 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 it's, you know... It should be passed. And as I've just said at the start, the dog is voting for it and he's put his card up. <laughs> Thank you I've very got much I've got to ask any questions, but we've, we've got... A builder's going to come along and put a lot of houses in one place. We've got a floodplain all the way along the one village, so we're stuck for houses, and this is ideal. Thank you. You didn't. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor. Uh, any questions of Councillor Barnes? No? Thank you very much, Councillor. Right, now we can move on to any technical questions. And I think the first one, um, the, uh, the Councillor, uh, Mr Mosley, made a mention of the Housing Development Survey and saying there was no problems with small-scale development in this particular area. Can you comment on that, please? I think it was... Uh, not, we're not aware of that. So do you mean the neighbourhood plan? No, because that was... that's, not, that's not set yet, is it? No. The neighbourhood development plan isn't set yet. I, he was referring to a document. Um, the landscape sensitivity study. Okay. Um, so uh, the landscape sensitivity study um, is part of a, a, a wider document looking at um, the sensitivity of um, land and proposed development across the wider district. Um, that... Um, study I don't believe would have sort of looked at specifically um, the assessment of is the site in the physical confines or outside the physical confines. I believe it's probably looking at more of the wider landscape implications of built development, whether it be sort of housing or, or commercial. Thank you. Councillor Richards. Anna, could you bring up slide, slide 23, I think it is, please. Might be 22. 21. I was close. So just so I'm clear, is that, that is the proposed built-up area boundary 
that is contained within our site allocations plan that is currently being consulted on? Yes, that's correct. Um, this is the um, draft built up area boundary as endorsed by cabinets um, that forms part of the site allocation plan. Yeah, okay. So there's no, uh, un unless and or until that's adopted, there is no formal built up area boundary. Clearly, the parish council now have an opportunity to say, well, actually, we don't think you've taken up enough. Our neighbourhood plan says this. We can then change that. So it's not set in stone yet, it can be changed. Um, I believe, yes, it, it can be changed. Um, that uh, built up area boundary is out for consultation. Um, and as um, stated by the, the Parish Council um, and the agent, um, the neighbourhood plan hasn't been adopted yet. That, that, that is still at its very early stages. Um, so and so my, I mean, from what I heard from the, the Parish Council Chair, that it's, the, the built up area boundary is very much at a, uh, a late stage, or if not, confirmed within their um, documents, it just hasn't been submitted to us. So my next question is, once it's submitted, in your experience, how long does it take to get from the uh, submission through to final adoption? Is it a matter of a couple of months or is it a matter of six months or years? Um, I, I can't comment specifically on time limits. Um, obviously, it will be a matter of going through all the formal consultations, um, making sure that the plan is sound, taking it to examination. Um, so it wouldn't be a matter of weeks. <laughs> um, it, it could so we're, be. Talk, we're talking a minimum of six months, probably a year. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Um, I, I, I see my solicitors nodding slightly. I don't know if he uh, wants to make a comment. <laughs> Yeah, you can't put a precise time scale on it, but six months to a year would probably be a fair that's, So typically, that's what I wanted to know. Okay, thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Councilman. Uh, well, well, thank you, Chair. Um, I think, actually, Councilor Richards asked um, one more question than I was going to, and I'm very happy with the answer. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Technical questions? No. Uh, can I open it up to debate, then, please? Councilor Fielding. Going on two, two precedents, one is in my ward, one is where there is a built-up area boundary and talking to John Crawford, Kefford, um, the neighbourhood plan will supersede the area boundary, so therefore if there is going to be a neighbourhood plan, um, then, or as there is going to be a neighbourhood plan, then it could supersede what is up there at the moment. And the second one is a precedent in one of the villages where we, get, we granted planning permission on the grounds that the neighbourhood plan anyway was going to be coming to the area and all we were doing was putting off the inevitable. And I think in this case we are probably looking at the same sort of problem. Councillor Norton. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, OK, I've got a lot of sympathy with the, uh, the parish council and the ward member. Um, my view here is that this might come to this committee in 18 months' time when the neighbourhood plan is in place, whether this proposed built-up area boundaries are accepted or not. At the moment, I can't see any reason why we could not um, go with the officer's recommendation and refuse this application. Councillor Bridges. Uh, it appears Councillor Lawton and I are of the same mind. The, the, the difficulty we've got, we don't have the benefit of the neighbourhood plan in front of us. It's not been formally adopted, and therefore we're making a decision on policies that we have set here. And the officer's recommendation has come with those policies in mind, and I think is very appropriate given where we are now. In 18 months' time, that may be different, but we are where we are today, um, and I think I would be proposing that we do refuse on that basis. Thank you. I have to admit, I think this is a finely balanced one because of the uh, input from the Parish Council, um, but you're, you're right. It has not come through as a formal not neighbourhood development plan and such like. I, I feel that obviously if it did come back, I don't see any reason because the first uh, dwelling, plot one, would be uh, acceptable today or is acceptable today, but plot two not. So I'm, I agree with Councillor Lawton um, on that particular point, I'm afraid. Uh, I have sympathy, but I think that we must go with the officer's recommendation. Um, I have a proposer. Do I have a seconder, please? For the Thank you. Uh, members, um, if there's no more debate on this particular item, the, uh, I have a proposer and a seconder for refusing this planning permission. This is for 17 0324 4 full 
All those in favour? One, two, three, four chairmen. Against? Two chairmen. Okay, this committee therefore resolves to refuse planning permission for 17 slash 03244 slash 4. Thank you very much. Uh, there are no other items on the agenda. I therefore will close the meeting. Thank you.